With the groundbreaking word that Hertzsprung and Russell did inventing this HR diagram over the years, we of course expanded upon it a lot with their help. And this is what typically a modern day HR diagram looks like. So notice there's many more stars because we've been looking at thousands and thousands of stars. Place those stars on the HR diagram, get a much better picture of what the HR diagram, diagram looks like. And notice that the vast majority of the stars are lying along this line here. Now notice this no longer a straight line, has a little bit of an S curve to it. And they now call that region here on the diagram. Now remember, this is just a diagram region. It's not a physical region out in space. It just represents something about stars. It just represents that these are the stars that are in their main cycle of life, their main sequence of life as they call it. So therefore, we call this the main sequence. So let's write that down, the main sequence. And so what we have discovered since, that this is the stage of the cycle of, of the, the life cycle of stars where they're simply converting hydrogen to helium their cores. So this is the stage what most stars uh, that most stars that you see out in the universe are in at this moment. Our sun is in that stage, it's peacefully converting hydrogen to helium. And there's also the stage of the star's life that takes the most or the longest time to go through. Then we've discovered that these stars then at some point begin to change. Now notice these dots over here. What do they represent up here? Well, notice they tend to be orange or red in color and they're extremely luminous. That means they're cool on the surface, yet way, way brighter than the stars in this region right here, which have a much hotter surface. Well, cooler surface should normally mean much less luminous, but if they're that much more luminous than the stars on over here, they must be much, much larger, and that's indeed the case. These are called red giant stars, and the ones that are way up here are actually called uh, red supergiants. So these stars have grown to enormous size, and that's because now at the, at the core of those stars, a different kind of nuclear fusion process takes place. In those, in those stars, instead of converting hydrogen to helium, they tend to convert helium to carbon, which is a much more ferocious nuclear process, generating a lot more heat, expanding the stars to enormous sizes. So those are what we call the red giants. And you can go out at night in the sky and look around and see those red giants out there. And you can see red giants to very large distances because they are so large and they are so luminous. Now here, notice here the little white dwarfs. And it turns out that the white dwarfs are typically the end stage of a star's life. So what typically happens is a star becomes a main sequence star, then eventually becomes a red giant, and then eventually becomes a white dwarf. And as a white dwarf exists in, in the universe for billions and billions of years, it slowly begins to cool down. And as the, star, the, the white dwarf stars cool down from white stars, they become yellow stars, they become orange stars and red stars, and eventually brown stars, black stars, and kind of disappear out of sight. But that's generally the end stage of a star right there, where just the core of the star survives. It shrinks down to fairly small size, that's why they're so dim, and then they slowly cool down over the billions and billions of years. So we've been able to, to figure out the life cycle of stars by this HR diagram as well. And in some later videos, I will go through the details of how we actually discovered that and how we can then piece all that information together to really understand what's going on in stars. But what we're interested in here is ultimately how to find the distances to stars. So remember, before the HR diagram, we could only find the distance to maybe the 100 nearest stars, but now we can find the distance to thousands upon thousands, millions of stars, really. All we have to do is take a look at a star with a powerful microscope, measure its apparent brightness, how bright it appears to be, then by the color of the star, determine where on the HR diagram it would end up. And remember that these are the very small stars. We call, sometimes they're called the red dwarf stars. And so these are bigger stars and bigger stars and bigger stars. These are stars the size of the sun. These are bigger stars again. And you can see that these stars up here must absolutely be enormous because this is not a linear scale here. This is a log logarithmic scale. And yes, indeed, there are stars that are as much as a billion times as bright as the sun. So one of those stars gives off as much light as a billion suns. So those are enormously large stars with very hot surface temperatures. Notice the letters down here. Those are called the spectral types of stars. So we have classified them as O, B, F, G, K, and M stars, our sun being a G-class star. So uh, that's a spectral, spectral class G. Now, notice that once we have this, this association between the color and the actual luminosity, so from this chart, anytime we find a chart and we find its color, we can find its luminosity. And from its luminosity, we can then 
go measure its apparent luminosity and from that we can measure its distance. So that's now how, how we know how far stars are away from us. So this methodology has now been given a name. Remember what we used to use by measuring angles? We used to call that the parallax angle of uh, methodology. Well, they call this the method of uh, spectroscopic parallax. So let me write that down. So, so instead of measuring angles, we basically measure color. So spectroscopic means that we measure the color of the stars in order to figure out their distance. It has nothing to do with measuring the angle, of course, but they just use this term to simulate that it's like measuring the angles for stars in nearby using the parallax angle. So this is kind of an interesting concept. But again, this has really blown the doors off our understanding of stars. We now understand their sizes, we now understand their distances, we now understand that they go through a life cycle, and so this has really enabled us to understand stars a whole lot better. But it really opened us to, uh, for us the ability to figure out how far and how big things were. So once we're able to figure out the distance of stars that are far away from us using powerful telescopes, we then began to get a feel for how big our Milky Way galaxy was. And then slowly over time, we began to see those little fuzzy patches within what we thought was within our Milky Way galaxy. When we started looking at them, we had actually found a way to realize that those things are not inside our own galaxy, but they're actually beyond our own galaxy. And that those things are actually like our own Milky not yeah, like our own Milky Way galaxy, but much farther away. So little island, island universes. So how did we figure out the distance to those? And how did we come out to realize that those are not just nebulas in our galaxy, but they're actually other galaxies beyond our own galaxy. So beginning to learn to appreciate how to find the distance to stars and then distance to objects, we then began to realize, wow, this universe is bigger and bigger and bigger than we ever thought it was, was going to be. So stay tuned if you're interested in this and we'll show you some more clever techniques of how they figured out how big the entire universe was one step at a time.